Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Diamonds Enough podcast. I'm joined with Nate. We're back. It's been a while. Yeah. And, it's good to be back. you know, April is the time where a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of sports stuff's happening. I know mm-hmm. Celtics are the number one seed. Um, Bruins, Bruins are in the playoffs. Are they the one seed? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what seed they are. I know they were uh, round one or two uh, all season. I'm not sure what they finished off at. I yeah. Think, are they playing their last game tonight? I think maybe. I think I saw something like that. But I think so. They're definitely like, yeah. you know, classic, like should be contenders, but will probably mm-hmm. choke, whatever. Right. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but I feel like I'm known for the Patriots stuff. So people mm-hmm. know me by, even though I'm more involved with basketball in my life, but Patriots is, I feel like what I analyzed the most and started with the draft stuff and we're back. We're back with the draft stuff next Thursday. Yeah. It's, is the draft. It came up quick. First time in my life. It's been like a rebuild. We have the third overall pick. Yeah. In a loaded QB draft. But first we got to talk about what happened in the off season. Yep. So really, first time in our lives, pretty much, at least that, you know, when we remember stuff that Bill Belichick isn't the coach. It's weird. Yeah, it's that really day, weird. Waking up, it's it was probably the right decision. But, um, you know, it was it, it was that still waking up and, you, you know, it seemed like it was it was going in that direction that he was going to be gone. But just waking up, seeing that notification and it actually being real, it, it's crazy for sure. Yeah, it was tough. I'm glad it was more mutual. Yeah. It didn't seem like any hard feelings. Mm-hmm. But what I want to say about it is in my mind, he's still an elite coach. For sure. He took a lot of shit. A lot. And to me, a lot of it was unwarranted. As far as the coaching, it boiled down to he was a terrible GM. Yeah. He made terrible GM choices the past, like, the final, like, five years. Yeah, it was just... That was the problem. It was a train wreck there. I thought, personally, the way it was going to go was they would relinquish the GM duty and he would stay as a head coach, because I thought he would have been okay with that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it didn't happen. They cleaned house, and I'm honestly fine with it. Yeah. I'm fine with the decision. Um... But I don't like the coaching slander. He was an amazing coach. It's ridiculous. To me, he wasn't like like them going four and thirteen. I don't know another coach that would have done a better job. No, yeah, I mean he was put in terror and partly it's his fault. because partly because of his GM self. But he still, you know, the end of the season we had nothing to play for. You know, we were really trying. I mean not trying to lose but you know you want to possibly uh, get a better draft pick but he was still going out there with Bailey Zappi and beating teams um you know yeah like you said I don't know that another coach another coach probably would have had the first uh first overall pick um and yeah the GM part of it has not gone the way it should have gone the past four or five years um but yeah the coaching it's it's always been there still and yeah i think it was just really time for both sides to move on um sure. and i was just i'm not i would have been fine yeah like you said if he had if we had said you're not the gm anymore just be the head coach um but it seems like yeah maybe that didn't what he wasn't very into that um but yeah it's i i, I can't believe he didn't get a, a head coaching job and uh the slander out the door is uh pretty crazy to me if he got that atlanta job mm-hmm. and, and assuming their free agency panned out the same way where he gets kirk cousins Ooh. i truly believe they would have won the super bowl yeah and Man. that is crazy to say and i don't care what anyone says or thinks i'm never going to be proven right or wrong right right but watching atlanta it was all coaching. They had guys on both sides of the field and they're going about 500. To me, 
it was it would have been the exact same result as when Brady moved to the Bucks, where they were five hundred. They just needed that final thing of quarterback. Yeah, right. The Falcons, they're five hundred. They just need that final thing of the coach, and because they, they, I'm assuming they got the QB with Kirk Cousins, right? Right. Um, and I think it's just really irresponsible by them to not go that direction, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think that's absolutely uh, true. And I think it's irresponsible also by like just some of these other teams, uh, like the Titans or the uh, Pan. I mean, obviously, who knows? He probably didn't want the Panthers, but all these other franchises to not even bring him in for an interview. And who knows? Maybe he turned them down or only wanted to talk to the Falcons. But yeah, really, you know, look at someone like Kyle Pitts, who has been underutilized his entire career. He was the fourth overall pick. He's clearly talented. You get someone like Bill who can has been proven to utilize the tight ends um, in his career. And imagine him with Kirk Cousins and Kyle Pitts, Bijan, the way Belichick uses the running backs out of the backfield. Yeah, it really is. And who knows, Raheem Morris could uh, go on to have, you know, he could end up well, but you know, Taking that risk um, on someone like that who hasn't worked out in the past, you know, he's had chances for the Falcons as well um, and it hasn't worked out. I mean, obviously that was interim, um, but, you know, yeah, it's why not just get that proven track record with the greatest coach of all time <laughs> and bring him in? I don't know, but uh, that's that's their decision to make and we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, and I obviously don't know the full story. Maybe he is demanding to be GM. And in that case, right. you you can't do that. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I didn't I didn't get that impression. So the next thing I feel like needs to be talked about is Belichick's not the coach. Yeah. I think all of us Patriots fans thought the same thing. Why the heck did Mike Vrabel get fired, right. who I believe is a top five coach, and how he doesn't have a job? Also baffling to me exactly um so i think everyone's kind of thinking that's what's going to happen i mean there was the craft meeting with Vrabel mm -hmm. that happened not meeting but they retired his jersey and they were up in the box and you know what they're talking about right we all knew what they were talking about and you know patriots love Vrabel. i mean he broke our hearts recently when we all watched him beat us in brady's final game i was there yeah. tough game um, so every Patriots fan believed him, believes in him. I feel like everyone in the organization obviously thinks he's amazing, not only as a player, but um, as a coach. But I like that they went fast with it. There wasn't too much thinking. There wasn't too much sports talking. It's Gerard Mayo's the coach. Yeah. So for sure. For sure. the other thing I want to mention is – I believe it was in Belichick's contract mm -hmm. that Mayo is his successor. That has been reported. Mm -hmm. I think I want to take that as fact simply because, look, how fast they did the turnaround. Like, they didn't interview anyone. Right. It was just Mayo's the coach. So I'm going to take that as fact. Yeah, it was like the next day, I think, right? Yeah. So I'll let you first give your opinion on Mayo as the head coach. Yeah, so I think, and like you said, um, I would have loved uh, to have Vrabel. Um, I think he's a tremendous coach, and like you said, I can't believe he doesn't have a job. Um, I would have liked to, you know, maybe given him an interview. Um, but I, the thing about Mayo is, um, you know, the defense – and obviously he hasn't been the D name, the DC, uh, but you know, he's been one of the leaders of the defense um, coaching wise, the past few years, the defense has not been the problem. So when people say, Oh, you know, it's just another uh, Belichick uh, assistant, you know, he's not going to work out. Obviously he hasn't had uh, the best success with his coaching tree, um, but the defense hasn't been the problem. You know, he has this experience the past few years, uh, as D, not DC, but you know, like I said, one of the head coaches on the defense. Um, and you know, he was the head of the defense for 
10 years uh, when he played for the Patriots, you know, that matters. Uh, you know, he's uh, been able to call that. Um, so it's not like he's never called plays. Uh, obviously, he's not calling the plays, but, you know, he relays it. Um, and he's basically the coach of the defense for that long. So I think that matters. And the other thing, and like you said, I, I think, yeah, it was in Belichick's contract. And I think, was it in Mayo's contract? I feel like there was something um, like kind of both ways that, you know, that was just always the plan uh, going along. Yeah, it definitely was suspect when he had multiple head coaching interviews and he right. just decided I'm going to stay. It was yes. definitely questionable. It was awesome yeah. when I heard right. it. Um, yeah. yeah, so part of that, I, I'm I'm just happy that, yeah, they, they stuck to their word on that. And also, even if that wasn't the case, I think no matter what, even if you bring in Vrabel, you know, it's still like, either or what they're going to decide, they're probably still leaning towards Mayo. And if you bring in Mike Vrabel for an interview, that's kind of just, you know, bringing Mayo's confidence down. It's like, oh, you don't really believe me. You're not just going to hire me right away. So, yeah, like you said, the fact that it was right away, I liked that they, you know, stuck with their guns, stuck to their word and, you know, gave the confidence to, to Gerard Mayo because that's what you need in a young coach. Look at these guys, you know, D'Amico Ryan's, they put the put this faith in him uh, right from the jump. All these young coaches, if you do that, I think that's that's a huge thing. So I, I was thinking, you know, I'd be happy to have brought in Mayo or Vrabel for an interview. But the more I thought about it, I was like, you know, I like sticking with Mayo, having that confidence in him and, uh, you know, just yeah, instilling that confidence in him, really. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely and I think this is any decision in life, if someone believes in it with 100% confidence and shows 100% action towards it, you're going to believe in it a lot more than if there's deliberation, trying to figure it out, everything like that. And they showed that. Um, mm -hmm. You basically hit everything I wanted to say about Mayo. Um, I, I think he's definitely fitting this new wave of coaches where they're all young kind of players, coaches, dudes like him. Mm -hmm. He's fitting that. Right. So I'm trying to go chronologically here. Um, I believe the next thing that happened was Steve Belichick left for Washington. Yep. And, you know, some other guy, Bill O'Brien left for... Right. So Did he, he go back to Alabama? No, so he went to Ohio State as the OC, but then the BC head coaching job opened up. So he took that. So now he's the he's coaching BC, BC head coach. Yeah. That was all within Jeez. a span of like a week. So interesting. Okay. He's like transfer portaling it. Um, yeah. We'll see how that works. Out. But... <laughs> yeah. So, and then whoever the special teams guy was left and mm -hmm. obviously Belichick getting fired that opened up head coaching and GM. So basically the day after Belichick got fired, it was pretty much like every single important coaching position is open. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cause I'm going to say Mayo is the DC and right. Yeah. Right. So Mayo goes to head coach. Um, Elliot Wolf. I don't think he's been promoted as GM, but he's basically the guy that's going to step in and be the GM. Yeah. He's been taking all the interviews and stuff. So yeah. Much, yeah. And I guess I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and you know, sure. I don't have an opinion really. That's the thing about executives; you never really like. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> to me, these were just interesting because it was Mayo was kind of crafting what he wanted, and you're mm -hmm. thinking, what connections does he have? I mean, I think everyone's like, is he going to bring McDaniel's as the OC? Right. You know, is he going to go with someone young, someone from the Rams system? He goes with Alex Van Pelt, mm -hmm. who I would say is like a veteran offensive coordinator he's done it before um yeah. he's with the browns he's had multiple relatively successful offenses i like the move yeah in the sense of i didn't feel like it was risky it mm -hmm. was you know you're a new coach you want someone who's done it before that you feel like you can trust maybe his ceiling isn't as high for what he can make the offense right but you know the floor is high mm -hmm. and when the defense is the star of your team you just want your offense to be competent uh, competent which i think he displayed last year he can do when he doesn't have a ton of stuff right, right? four quarterbacks nick chubb out for the year mm. you know he's dealing with what elijah moore is like yeah. his wide receiver too 
and he brings them to the playoffs and makes people think Joe Flacco is a legitimate <laughs> quarterback still. Seriously, yeah, comeback player of the year for <laughs> yeah. So got to give him credit for that. Demarcus Covington steps in as the DC. I believe he was the D line coach, which yeah, was... was definitely a strength of the defense and. For sure. From everything I've heard from other people, it's this dude deserved it. And if he didn't get it here, he was going to leave. So I'm yeah. all for keeping someone you know is elite at something and giving him a promotion when it's deserved. Sure. And it sounds like he deserved it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool with it. And then Jeremy Springer is a special teams coordinator. I believe he was with the Rams. Okay. Yeah, you I know, could be wrong. Anyone. Anyone from McVeigh's uh, tree, if he is. Obviously, we all want the captain to step in. Um, <laughs> uh, Matthew <laughs> Slater. Yes. Yeah, I know. That would have been perfect. I just want to confirm. Did, I... Yeah, special teams assistant with the Rams. So he's getting a promotion technically coming in, being the special teams coordinator. Okay. Yeah. And then the big... I say big move. It was big for a day for Patriots fans, but it hasn't been talked about since. Dante Hightower is the linebackers coach. I was going to say I love that. Um, Mr. I mean, February. Yeah, I, lo I love love Dante Hightower. Uh, so, yeah, I love that move. I mean, he obviously doesn't have coaching experience, but, I mean, like we said with Mayo, uh, you know, he has the experience calling the defense for 10-some uh, 10, 10 years, so – yeah, I like that hire, and, you know, it's always good to have, you know, former players back, uh, especially Dante, who's been such a big piece the past 10 years. I liked how it all went down, because the way it worked was, like, Mayo had an interview when mm -hmm. he was the D.C. saying he'd love to bring Hightower in whenever he becomes the coach. That interview's going wild, and it was, like, two years ago or something. Yeah. Then Hightower responds to the tweet saying, I'm ready whenever you need me, right? And there's that anticipation, and then it's like a day or two announced, yeah. and it was just fantastic. Uh -huh. The biggest thing I can summarize this offseason is it's new, it's fun, it's fresh, it's young, there's hope. And every Patriots fan, to me, should be feeling happy. When I'm hearing a lot of other stuff, but we'll get into it mm -hmm. later, we talk draft stuff. Right. Those are pretty much the major coaching moves mm -hmm. the one thing i want to mention is that there is a complete change in culture in everything from my what i've heard where completely new draft grading system mm -hmm. there's not going to be one guy making the draft decision it's a much more collaborative effort mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily keeping as many secrets and this is something that i can attest to because i season ticket holder so i get you know my family season tickets mm -hmm. we get offered these like events essentially that they put on and there's always been a draft party where they'll bring on like five analysts there's some you know they talk draft there's been some you know some food some whatever yeah. um and usually it's like it's kind of whatever it started off really good but each year it kind of got worse and worse and worse this year they do an interview in person with gerard mayo and the director of college scouting talking draft stuff yeah to me it was a different fan experience because i'm like the patriots since we've known them is they're not going to tell you anything yeah you know Bill, great game. You won 49-0. Oh, you know, there's things we could work on out there. Right? Like, it's it's always, like, the diplomatic answers. No one's going to cut. And yeah. um, the Cincinnati. Yeah. I'll get into the interview, some notes I had from the interview later, but there was things he was saying that I took and was like, he's actually throwing a lot of stuff out here yeah. about what the team might do in the draft. Um, yeah, which is, which is so great, you know, to give the fans that transparency, especially after – you know, a few bad years. Um, we're not used to this. Uh, like you, like you're saying, we're not used to having a pick this high. We're not used to, you know, having a new coach. So it's, it's really great that, you know, like you said, this culture change and, you know, that's, that's, that's awesome that, uh, you know, that this, you actually get stuff from this uh, rather than, you know, just the classic uh, non-answers um, that, you know, sometimes happen with those. 
Exactly. And then also you have, um, I mean, I guess we can talk about this too, this dynasty doc, but before that, yeah. um, you know, the, the teams do these grades on each things like workouts, workout room, nutrition, whatever. And it's yeah. cool because the Patriots got ranked the worst weight room and Robert Kraft is addressing it immediately, mm -hmm. renovating the whole weight room and making it something great for the players. So stuff like that, where they're actually listening to this feedback they're getting, they're yeah. trying to make a change. And it's just really great to see. It's something I wish, um, you know, another ownership of a certain Boston sports team would do the Red Sox. Um, yes, please. Of investing into what you have and trying to make it as good as possible rather than, you know, throwing a triple A team out there. But yeah, duck in the media, any chance you get, uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll talk about that. Just had to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. But now let's get into free agency. Mm -hmm. And then I want to address the Dynasty doc, which I'll be transparent. I didn't see it because who the hell is Apple TV? But yeah. based on what I've heard, obviously I have some opinions. But mm -hmm. I'm going to go just what I see here first thing. So I don't know if this is in chronological order. But we're just going to go with it. Yeah. Kobe Brissett, one year, $8 million deal. Max value of 12. Okay, clearly a bridge quarterback. Right. Yep. Hopefully someone that can guide whoever you draft or, you know, bring in uh, in the future. Yeah, hopefully guide him. And he's been around here, so, you know, he can help with that uh, a little bit. So, yeah, just like you said, a bridge quarterback. Someone sure. you know can win you games if you need to. And if he needs to sit completely fine with it, he's going to be a great mentor. Right? Right. Yeah. Love it. Great teammate. Love great it. Team. I'm going yeah. I was some people are like, oh my god, we're bringing him in. I love the deal. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much mostly incentives. I mean, obviously it's eight mil, but it's for one year, so it's no, no commitment really. So it's yeah, it's nothing nothing crazy. Everyone was talking about the cap, the cap, the cap. They have so much cap, they have so much cap. Guys, please. This is not a one year rebuild where we're gonna win the Super Bowl. Relax. Yeah. That's what I want to say before I keep getting into this stuff. Mm -hmm. So another common Patriots thing that would happen is if you are too much money, you are gone. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Right. We can point to so many dudes that were incredible for us, but that contract was coming up. So we got to trade you, right? Like Richard Seymour. Mm -hmm. Right. Business talking business. about trading Gronk. Yeah. Right. Like we can point to so many guys where it's like, you're too much money. We're going to have to trade you. We don't want to pay you that. It's too much money. I don't care if you're good. Right. And so there's some cases where it works out. Right. JC Jackson, fantastic example of he wasn't worth the money. Yep. Some cases where it's like, you know, Joe Tooney's looking for his like what fifth Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. That would have helped out. Right. He's the best guard in the league. Yeah. Um, but so the Patriots said, screw that. We're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And they basically extend our two best players to big money deals, probably overpays for both of them. Mike yeah. Unwenu, I think they said they're going to put him at right tackle. Yeah. So he's kind of getting paid like tackle money, even though I think you put him at guard. He's the best guard in the league. But we got a tackle issue. We have plenty yeah. of guards. Right. It's um, more about Cole Strange, movie. obviously a first rounder. City So was actually pretty good last year. Mm -hmm. Plenty of guard depth, but tackles are not it. Yeah, need some help there. So he gets a three year, fifty seven million dollar deal. Gets yeah. a bag. Yeah, I loved it. I I thought that was the number one guy, especially with the just the terrible. I mean, it's been a little improved last year, like you said. City So was pretty good. Cole Strange is coming into his own but we we especially at those tackles the nfl um, you need tackles uh to be able to win uh, and do anything on offense so i thought that was uh definitely big to bring him back i thought he was the biggest guy that we had to re-sign and uh definitely happy that we brought him back for sure mm -hmm. and then obviously kyle duggar yeah who was not happy when he got the transition tag right and the Patriots quickly kind of amended that and said, here's a four-year big money deal. Yeah, Kind of had a down year last year, to be honest. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, not as good as the year before. Yeah, but, you know, I think um, it's one of those things where Mayo might just be like, I don't really want to worry about safeties. I really don't. Right. Let's just have Duggar and Peppers. They'll play their butts off. They'll work hard. It'll be worth it. And, you know, one of the Patriots systems that kind of got them as far as they did was they prioritized having a really good safety group. Right. Yeah. Right. I feel I feel like safety is kind of the quarterback of the defense. I know it's like middle linebackers, the mic calling the place, but the safety is the one who sees it all. He's your yeah. last line of defense. It's nice mm -hmm. to have good ones. And yeah. Kyle Duggar's a little more versatile. He'll play in the box. He'll play the slot. But right. so already getting rid of one of the Patriots traditions. Yeah. Of if you're too much money, that's tough. You're gone. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Bringing the bringing the boys back. I like to see it. So rest of these are kind of eh. Like mm -hmm. Anthony Jennings is back. Josh Uche is back. Both small deals. Uche took a pay cut to stay. That's kind of noteworthy. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing, uh, you know, he had a little bit of a down year uh, last year as well. So, you know, maybe trying to come back to a system that he's played well in. Obviously, he had a great year the year before. Um, maybe try to cash in and uh, get, get a, a bigger contract next year. But, yeah, I, I'm happy to see him back uh, and hopefully bounces back. Yep. I'm going to cut to... Two of the more surprising deals to me. I'm surprised these two stayed. Yeah. Kendrick Bourne, three years, 33. I thought he showed enough last year before the injury that he could get a similar contract with a much better team. Mm -hmm. But he wants to build something here. Yeah. Hunter Henry, similar thing. I was I know what nine million a year. Pretty sure someone would give him nine million a year. That's a much better team. He's yeah. liked it here. Mm -hmm. He wants to build something here. And that kind of speaks volumes when it's like, we felt it was so bad. They went four and 13, but clearly it wasn't that bad. If these guys want to stay exactly. knowing the different question marks. And it also could show maybe Mayo is that likable mm -hmm. that just him being the head coach has made guys go, you know what? He's going to treat me right. He's going to pay me what I want. Yeah. I'll go through the grind to try to, you know, this is a guy I want to fight for. Let me see what we can do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they clearly, yeah, especially Bourne, you know, he, everything he says, he's saying, you know, he loves, loves the Patriots, uh, loves being here. Um, and, you, you know, you love to hear that. And he, he loves Mayo too. So it's, yeah, it's good to see, uh, you know, yeah, it's, like you said, it's, it's not as dumpster fire, everything, going crazy like people uh wanted to assume with last year it's you know we're, we're turning the page and you know people people still like it around here yeah because if it was as bad as the fans thought and right. the reporters were saying none of these guys would be coming back exactly yeah and no one would be coming here unless right. massive overpays mm -hmm. now this guy i want to mention very similar guy to when we signed kendrick Bourne to me you know, Kendrick Bourne was the third wide receiver on a Niners team that had plenty of weapons, and he showed promise, but not as much usage. Yep. This guy's a wide receiver, K.J. Osborne, behind Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. He doesn't exactly get the usage, but I think he had a career year last year. And he showed flashes, you know, especially yeah. when Jefferson was out. It You know, the Vi it's not like the Vikings couldn't score without him. Right. Yeah. And that's the best receiver in the league, so... I'm not going to sit here and act like KJ Osborne is our number one receiver. Right. I'm just saying I'm cool with the signing. I like it. I think if you were to get a cheap receiver, that's an upgrade over what we have. Definitely. Now, another thing I want to note, because Pats fans were mad we didn't give like $25 million to Calvin Ridley. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> what do you get? Four years, 92. Yeah, a lot of money. Lot of Nate, money. do you think Calvin Ridley's a number one receiver? I think he could be in the right system, but for the Patriots... Are yeah. you telling me like you couldn't name 30 receivers better than him? 30? I'm not going to sit here and do it. I, I, I So, 
I, I wouldn't, I'd say he's right around that 20 to 30 range. So like, I'm not saying he's like, okay, but maybe, maybe towards the back. I'm happy that like, it's way overpay. I think it was, I'm, I'm fine that we, I still, I wanted to get him for a lot cheaper, obviously. I think it was definitely an overpay and I'm fine that we just, uh, you know, kind of bowed out and, According to Robert Kraft, you know, I guess we didn't bow out. It was, it was more that uh, his girlfriend wanted to live down south. Um, and uh, here's the thing. Based on the deal he took mm -hmm. and the deals he declined, he wanted the most money possible. Right. Tennessee sure. gave him 23 a year. Jacksonville gave him 22 a year. We were, or I think Jacksonville gave him maybe 21 a year. We mm -hmm. gave 22. Regardless, we were in it. Yeah. The thing that I don't know why it doesn't get talked about enough because it's a simple, simple math. Mm -hmm. There we have state tax, those two places don't. Right. Yeah. So we're to compete money wise for him to get his 23 a year. We almost have to be at 25. Right. Yeah. For it to really matter. If we signed Calvin Ridley to four years 100 million dollars, you better be pissed. That's a stupid deal. And also, like taking four million dollars total more to go catch balls from Will Levis instead of Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I don't know about that decision. And uh, like I just I just don't it was all about the money for him. It's, it's and it's, isn't that worrying? Is this guy really gonna work hard if that those are the decisions he's making? That's definitely that's a big concern. And you know, I compared it or I've been comparing it since it happened, you know, and obviously I think Calvin Ridley is better than this guy, but it's something like, you know, Kenny Galladay. He had some yep. great seasons on his rookie contract with the Lions. Um, and then he's that big free agent uh, that one year he's, you know, better than all the other free agents that one year. And he gets overpaid by the Giants and he stops working hard. And that's definitely a concern for a guy like Calvin Ridley, who, you know, he. Like he said, I mean, I'm pretty sure he said it like pretty much in the press conference that he took he was there because of the most money. Um, so it's definitely a, a possibility. So I I'm definitely uh, you know, not mad that we uh didn't give him uh, that contract for sure. Yeah, after this, because I don't want to take up podcast time, I'm gonna name you 30 receivers better than him. I'm gonna okay. see if I can do it because I believe I can. Okay. Um but I'm going to kind of rapid fire these. Rager stays solid year, honestly. Cool with it. Pretty much mm -hmm. the minimum. Sion Taki Taki. Can't say I'm familiar with him. Mac Wilson replacement. If they made Jelani Tavai the fourth best linebacker based on PFF, I'm sure they'll make him a beast because I think yeah. he has the athleticism being 6'1, 238, former sure. third round pick. Yeah. I mean, I only knew him from seeing. You know, I'm sometimes on the Browns just get picks and stuff, jumping up like crazy. So, yeah, like, I'm Let's fine do. with it. See and what they can do. Austin Hooper, vet. Um, Sure. Gusecki yeah. replacement. He's fine. Sure. <laughs> um, I guess your big splash, day one, Antonio Gibson, three-year deal, $17.25 Yeah, that was interesting. Not – not the wide receiver one people were hoping for. <laughs> Definitely not. Hey, he was um, a wide receiver in college, though, so who knows? He was, and <laughs> I did one of my first podcasts ever because the original reason I called this Diamonds in the Rough was I felt like I specialized in the late, late round picks that no one yep. knew about. Mm -hmm. I had Antonio Gibson as a guy to select. Okay. Yeah. So I have some bias towards him. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that that rookie season, man, he was unbelievable. To me, he kind of got a little stiffed. I don't know why in Washington his his reps went down, but to me, he's a versatile weapon. He's explosive. I love him as a backup to Stevenson. Simply put, yeah. if you want to say like you know we're spending that money on a running back, yeah, yeah, sure. But honestly, we just need explosive players, right? Yeah. And, you know, look at all the times the Patriots have been great in the past. And obviously we had Tom Brady during that time, so it was a different time. But, you know, James White, uh, Shane Vereen, uh, you know, Kevin Falk, all these guys that are versatile can, you know, run the ball and also 
uh, catch the ball out of the backfield. So I like it. Um, yeah, it's it's de it definitely was interesting. You know, the first splash. Uh, but yeah, I like it. He's he's a fine player, and uh, yeah, it's Ron Rivera just seemed like he hated him. Uh, in Ro in Washington, he just never. He would fumble like one time, and he would be like, "All right, you're uh re returning kicks now." Uh, and it's just like, okay, it's not doesn't seem like everyone else has to uh, you know, follow by those same rules. It seemed like he had something out for him, but uh, yeah, I yeah, I like it for a fresh start, and you know, he's definitely got talent and athleticism, and you know, that's what we need uh on this offense right now. Yeah, and the final move I'll go over because the others are just like depth. He tackles guards you just have to do to fill out the roster. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how to say his name. I'm just Okora four. He's a former tackle for the Steelers. Yep. Um, he ended up getting released as a cost cutting move. Seems like there's upside with him. Mm -hmm. And I'm mentioning him because right now he's probably your starting left tackle. Yeah, I mean now I don't think it's a secret our starting left tackle is somewhere in the draft. Mm -hmm. I'm very confident saying that, For sure. but right now on the depth chart, he will be the left tackle one yeah. four year deal max value of eight and a quarter. So basically he's going to be a depth tackle, but if he's starting, he's going to get paid like a cheap left tackle. Hey, yeah. I mean, I like it, you know, starting left tackle. you got, you got to build up that. And like you said, he'll probably right now he's starting. But yeah, we're probably gonna build those tackles to the draft. It's important to have that depth, or else I know we were a big fan of him, but Vidarian Lowe, he's not very good um <laughs> when he was playing last year. We that thought was a... he was... I stand by that Miami game he did pretty good for not I, I think PFF was just like, we don't know who this guy is. We're not watching him. We're just gonna give him something. I'm gonna give him credit for the Miami game. I truly think he wasn't that bad. Yeah. The sure. rest of the year he was not good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we don't want we don't want to see that guy uh, out there anymore. So you got to build up that tackle depth. You know, offensive linemen get hurt all the time. You got to build it up. And uh, and right now he's the starter. Yeah, like you said. And yeah, we don't want any of those uh, guys from last year uh, starting right now. So I like it. You know, yeah, just build up that depth. All right, I think it's time now. All right. Let's... for the draft let's do it i want to put the assumption out there so we look at the draft this way caleb williams going number one yeah not even going to talk about him if you want my opinion i think he's going to be great what do you think gonna be great i agree yes i think he's okay great. people who think he's like a six rounder shut up Crazy. don't talk football to me cool yeah and yeah i'm gonna say Jaden daniels is the number two pick Okay. Yeah, um, you mean that way? This is seeming like the report. Adam Schefter today said you can buy your Jaden Daniels Commanders jersey. That's what's going to happen. That's what he yeah. said. Mm -hmm. Trust Shefty. Yeah. Um, I don't like Jaden Daniels personally, mm -hmm. but if you're Washington, I feel like you're a little more built than the Patriots. I understand you taking the guy who's ready right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the first guy we're going to talk about here, Drake May, at the possible three pick, he is not ready right now. I, I feel like this is something people are missing. Mm -hmm. And I love Drake May. This is what I want. I want this to happen, that Drake May is selected third. But some of the decision making isn't great. He had a down sophomore year from his freshman year. Mm -hmm. And the footwork is not ideal. It needs some work. Yeah. He is not as polished as some of these other guys. But the positives. Okay, yeah. one more negative. He's number 10 from North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's scared of that, I understand. It's tough to beat the Trubisky allegations. <laughs> it's tough. The positives. Uh, dude is 6'4", 230, and he's like 21. Yeah. Okay, so already a beast. I don't have to worry about him getting hurt. I don't have to worry if he can look over the line of scrimmage. Yep. He has a cannon of an arm, and his ability to improvise on the play is special. And I feel like when you're taking a quarterback top three, that's what you want. Any quarterback can make these throws 
when there's no when the protection's great. Any of these QBs can make these throws when the wide receiver's open. Well, we're looking for what can you do when shit goes south. Right. And he showed multiple occasions in college he could do that, especially mm-hmm. when you're playing on like North Carolina, not really known as a football program. Right. But they've said he changed the culture there. There's other stuff I've heard that aren't football related that I like. And I'm mentioning this because I'm someone who believes being a quarterback is more of a mental leadership thing than physical. For sure. If dudes like you, you're already 50% of being a good quarterback in my mind. Yeah. Splitting his NIL deals with the offensive line. Definitely a thing I like to hear. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, this guy. So stuff like that. And here's one stat I heard that's really stupid. Shouldn't have an impact, but I love it. And I'm going to mention it. He averaged 11 rebounds in high school. Oh, that's big. Dudes who rebound are better people. I'm going to say it. If you box out, hustle, get dirty, get the boards, you're a better person. So (laughs) board man gets paid. Board man gets paid. (laughs) Um, But that's what I'm going to say about Drake May. You can give your thoughts because I think this is what people are hoping at three, the most likely thing at three. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But I'll let yeah. you talk. Talk just Drake May, the, the player, and then we can kind of get in to, you know, Other what is QB the way they're going to go? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I want them to go uh, that way as well. I'm I'm a Drake May guy. Um, I was a little concerned. Um at you know last year he didn't have a great year uh, like you said he took a little step back but all the you know things that you want out of a quarterback like you said six four big he can uh you know he's mobile he can move in the pocket you know he's he's got that big arm um and I, even though he had um you know a bad or not a bad uh year last year just a little uh worse than the year before you know he was still making you know great plays from here and there uh you know you that arm talent is is there you can see it for sure um and you know just part of the problem with the past few years is with mac jones you know he just whenever things went bad he just kind of folded went down and he just couldn't really make plays like you know tom brady we we were used to seeing tom brady make you know in the pocket and i'm not saying drake may is tom brady obviously but uh you know he's just able to get out of pressure and, you know, make plays with his feet or, you know, with his arm on the run uh, from what I've seen, you know, so I definitely am a Drake May fan. I know that, like you said, he's still got, um, you know, ways to go, ways to develop, but um, he reminds me a little bit of someone like Josh Allen, you know, who Drake May actually had, like a lot better stats at college in college or obviously he was at, you know, power five school. Uh, so it might've helped a little bit, but you know, he had better stats um, and he's probably going to get drafted higher than Josh Allen, but you know, he was, you know, raw coming out of college as well. You know, he kind of had to, you know, go through those things his rookie year and who knows if Drake may is going to start if we draft him or if, you know, Jacoby Brissett will be that guy. But I know that, like we said, Jacoby Brissett is a great guy to, you know, take him under his wing. He's been around and he's been here and knows how to play quarterback here. Obviously it was, it was only, he was only a starter for uh, a game or two, uh, but you know, he knows what it's like to play here. He's knows what it's like to be a starter in the league. And I think he's a great guy to, you know, really get that full potential because yeah, like you said, I like, I, I, like I, I like Jaden Daniels, um, but I think Drake May's potential is just way higher with the skills that he has, um, and just the 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 given talent that he's got. And uh yeah, like you said, the 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 great teammate stuff that that's so important too as a quarterback. Um and he seems like, you know, a good leader. Um and I, I'm I'm all in on Drake May, and I'm definitely hoping that we do go that way um, at the third pick. But, yeah, like you said, we'll see. Yeah, good to mention Brissett because he's going to need to start if we do go this route. Um, yeah. 
of Drake May. And with the potential, him or Daniels, to me, it's not even close. Yeah. I, sure. I think um, other than Caleb, he has the most potential yeah. as far as QB goes. Mm-hmm. So now I want to mention what something Gerard Mayo said, this interview I was at. And to me, this is the direction I think they're going which mm-hmm. is not taking a QB. And I know this would upset people, but my philosophy normally has been, you need to make sure the guys around the QB is good before you get the QB in. QB should be the final piece of the puzzle because the idea as far as winning a Super Bowl is you get your QB, he's a pretty good ro- uh, rookie year, makes a big jump year two, and then the team is locked and loaded for year three. He's entering. He's now figured out how to be a quarterback. The team around him is amazing while he's on his rookie deal before he gets his big money deal. Yeah. That should kind of be how it goes. Year three, year four, the rookie deal, the quarterback is when you're trying to win it. Um, Like the Bears, per se. Yeah. Built it all up now. Take that. Take Caleb right there. Exactly. Which they made the right decision with Fields, but that's another thing. Yeah. Um, Patriots have a lot of work to do. Right. The three most important positions on offense are QB, your wide receiver one, your left tackle. We need all of them. Yeah. (laughs) And we can't answer them all in the draft, which is why I get annoyed when people talk about what they should do, acting like we can win a Super Bowl next year. We can't. This is a multi-year rebuild. Be patient. I'm Mm -hmm. sorry the 20 years, six Super Bowls, I don't even know the number of AFC championship games. I'm sorry that wasn't enough for you. Yeah. (laughs) But sometimes you need to be bad. And right now, you know, after your whole life, for people my age, (laughs) pretty much my whole life, we're bad. I know it's tough to swallow, right? Yeah. But Mayo is basically saying how you don't want to bring a quarterback into a bad situation. And he was as well talking about all the potential in the world for Drake May, all this stuff. But he pointed to last year's draft where he said, Carolina Panthers, trade all these assets. They're setting this guy up for failure when they draft Bryce Young. And then everyone's like, we'll just do what the Texans did. They drafted C.J. Stroud. That was two to three years of building the team and then plugging him in. Yeah, Why it was an easier time for him. And him saying that to all these fans to me was him basically saying, We are not ready to put C.J. Stroud into the system. We need to build everything around it so that next year or the year after we can get C.J. Stroud. And I also think it's very clear when they get Jacoby Brissett immediately. Immediately. They weren't even wasting time. Just give Jacoby Brissett the money. Yeah. Um, So what does that mean for the other options, right? Well, pretty clear one would be Marvin Harrison at three. Yeah. Um, I like it, you know. Why would I not want to take the son of a Hall of Fame receiver? Right. Why would I not want to take a wide receiver everyone's saying is the most pro ready receiver they've ever seen? I think these this Malik neighbors talk over that him is crazy. I think it's people trying to make a story out of nothing. We have said Marvin Harrison is the best receiver in college football for like three years practically. (laughs) Yeah. Why are we switching up? Why are we talking about what's his potential? I don't care. (laughs) <laughs> he's going to be elite. He's yeah. going to be great. No matter what, he's better than what we have. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He would be automatic number one the second we got him. Part of me thinks that if you have a number three overall pick, because if you take a quarterback and you're wrong, that sets it back five to 10 years. Yeah. Because it takes you that like five years, maybe longer in like a Daniel Jones case to figure out is he the guy or not? Right. Kind of in limbo. You're not getting much success. When do you punt on this guy isn't the answer? We need to rebuild again and try again. There is the philosophy of just keep taking quarterbacks. It'll work. Keep taking quarterbacks. It'll work. But, you know, if you put, give, get a quarterback and it's like, all right, you have Kendrick Bourne, you have KJ Osborne, Stevenson Gibson, your, your running backs, Henry and, Hooper are your tight ends. Your old line's like middle of the middle of the road. It's okay. Yeah. 
there's not many QBs going to succeed, right? Not yeah. many QBs going to succeed. So, um, I don't mind the idea of let's get the wide receiver one out of the way. Yeah, because I mean, the big thing the wide receiver one does is it puts all the other guys down. Yeah. Right. Kendrick Bourne isn't getting covered by Jalen Ramsey. Right. He's getting covered by the two. KJ Osborne isn't getting covered by um, say the who's the Cowboys second guy Bland. Bland, yeah. He's not getting covered by him. He's getting covered by some, yeah. Getting covered by some like nickel guy or some cornerback three who is coming off the practice squad. It's a big difference, yeah. Right. It it makes those jobs easier. Mm -hmm. Um, and we there's been so many examples of it. Right. I don't really even want to go over it. If you if you aren't aware of the impact of a wide receiver one, you haven't been watching football. And I was somewhat a little hesitant on it, but I've seen the light. Yeah. Right. Tua looked like a much better quarterback when he got Tyreek Hill, right? Yeah. Jalen Hurts had an unbelievable season when they trade for AJ Brown. It mm. matters. This is an answer. It's a no, it's a no-brainer. You can't go wrong with it. Yeah. You know he's gonna be good. I mean, he's yeah. just yeah, like you said, so pro ready. Yeah. So that's possibility number two, which I also love. Now, possibility number three is trading down. Mm -hmm. The most likely option would be the Vikings. Yeah. They are arguably a QB away after they had an incredible offseason and their whole roster is filled. And they also want Justin Jefferson to stay. Yeah, for sure. When they made the trade to get the second first round pick, it was no secret to anyone what they were doing. Yeah, it's <laughs> they're plotting. In a loaded QB class, they want a quarterback. <laughs> yeah. And they will After trade just losing their quarterback. They will trade whatever to get it. Mm -hmm. So as the Patriots, who are clearly rebuilding, and this is going to be a multi-year process, the idea of trading three for 11, 23. And the next year's first, and maybe a second too, whatever it is, can be enticing. Obviously, yeah. you need to hit on those picks. But that brings up a ton of options. Yeah. It's... Right? Um, some guys I want to highlight, because I'm assuming if you're doing that, you're taking a tackle. Right. Yeah. Goalt is the best tackle in the draft. He is a no-brainer to me. I love him. I heard some people talking about his bench press and how it was the same as Blake Corum. Bench press is not an accurate representation yeah. of how strong a dude is. It's hand strength, yeah. Cool. It, it's also like, like, like I'm six four. Blake Corum's like five ten. I have to right. move the bar a lot further than him. Not right. acting like I'm stronger than him. I'm not. I'm right. just saying, like, bench press isn't the greatest, you know, thing for strength, right? Yeah. Is just different. So I, that that doesn't worry me at all. I look at that in Notre Dame. He didn't like miss games. He didn't give up sacks. He didn't give up pressures. Yeah, Notre Dame just breeds offensive linemen. Uh -huh. No brainer to me. Multiple other guys, um, JC Latham, um, Fuaga, Oregon State, I really like. He's been flying up draft boards. Mm -hmm. um, the Shiny. Penn State guy has been dropping which is interesting. Oh, really? Huh. Um, but he he has a ton of potential in the sense that he's just such a big dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we've also seen them not work out. Right. right. Yeah. Um, and if you like wanted to get crazy with 11 and 23, there's other things you could do, like take a tackle with that 23 and get like Brock Bowers or something, who's just an unbelievable tight end. There's things you can do. Right. That would, but regardless, that would... I'm assuming if you do the 11 and 23, you're taking a tackle with one of them. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. And I think to me, the dream would be like Fuaga, I think, could be there at 11. Mm -hmm. And then like Brian Thomas at 23. But oh, yeah, I would like that. Brian Thomas is flying up draft boards. Um, AD Mitchell, maybe. Yeah, I, don't know. Nah. I like the South Carolina dude. Um, uh, Leggett, right? Yeah, but there, there's options. I know people wouldn't be as in love with eleven and twenty three, but the idea to me is, 
at 11, you get your left tackle, the future. Because mm-hmm. for those who don't know, this draft is loaded with offensive linemen, loaded with wide receivers, perfect for a team who doesn't have either. Yeah, for sure. we love that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so 11, you can legitimately get your left tackle of the future and not have to worry about it. Yeah. And then maybe you're not getting a wide receiver one, yeah. but maybe you're getting a guy who's a solid two. Yeah. It gets And we need help there anyway. So anything could help, you know, even. Yeah. yeah. And I know next year is a loaded wide receiver class as well. Yeah. Not yeah. as much QB. Something to note. This, this is the QB draft. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the one thing with, you know, you never know how what, what that's the one thing where you mentioned yeah um drafting a quarterback can be risky for sure but yeah like who knows really when you're going to be able to pick uh this high again and if Drake May is someone that you believe in which I do who knows uh if the Patriots front office does but I would take that chance on him right now um you know with like you said, not a great draft, uh, quarterback draft coming up in the future. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of interesting option, interesting options. Um, but yeah, it, it it should should be interesting to see. And the other thing, eleven and twenty three allows you to do is mm-hmm. you can get your guy, right, without feeling too bad about. It. Like if you're at eleven and you're like, Joe Walt's just so much better than these other tackles. Let's trade eleven in our third to move up four spots and get them right yeah. you can do that and you don't feel as bad because you just got you know an extra first round pick it's not two first rounders it's it's an extra because yeah. you are trading three right but um now we got to get to the big the big discussion you know what i'm talking about the thing that's driving patriots fans mad i'm getting texts about this we're recording on a tuesday On Sunday, the report was J.J. McCarthy, Michigan quarterback, was getting dinner with the (laughs) Patriots, and he was going to be in Foxborough all day Monday, Mm -hmm. meetings, workouts, blah, blah, blah. First thing, most important, what is your opinion on J.J. McCarthy? Regardless of draft position, what is your opinion on him? I am not the biggest fan. I don't – I'm not the biggest fan of him. I think – he could work out in a perfect situation. Like, for example, if the Vikings are the ones that end up drafting him, I think he could work out to an extent. I'm not very high on him. You know, he just, he didn't wow me in college. And he just seems like, you know, and obviously he didn't really need to. Um, You know, he had so much talent around him at Michigan and they won the championship. Um, but it wasn't because of him, really. They were always, you know, it was Blake Corum, it was that offensive line, it was that defense. Um, so I see, you know, some potential, but I'm I'm really not the biggest fan of his. Um, and I definitely hope that we don't draft him. How about okay. you? So I'm willing to be on record with this. Mm-hmm. I love him. Really? Okay. Almost, not the same, but almost at the same level as Drake May. Drake May is better. Mm -hmm. I like him more, but I definitely have him over Daniels. Yeah, okay. I think he's getting a lot of hate for a thing that was out of his control. Yeah. Right? To me, it's the equivalent of like, let's say, hypothetically, the Los Angeles Dodgers were playing a division three baseball team. Yeah. And this was for an actual game in their regular season, the MLB. Right. Yeah. They could win the game if every batter swung the opposite way. They could. But why would you right. do that? You get the win. Yeah. I feel like it's a similar thing with why they were running the ball so much. Right. They had the best running back in the country. They had the mm-hmm. best O lineman in the country. Alabama's been doing that type of thing for years and nothing gets happened, but because of JJ McCarthy, it's something we need to talk about because he threw like eight times at Penn State against Penn State. Yeah. It was a ranked game they needed, and all they needed to do was run the football. Right. When I look at JJ McCarthy, 
He has the arm strength. He has the footwork. He can make plays on the run. He can throw on the run. He's a really smart quarterback. Mm -hmm. The accuracy is kind of the thing that's a little worrying, but I feel personally, I feel like that's just reps and he'll get better with it. That being said, no planet I want to take him at three. Right. He is not worth the third overall pick. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Heading into the draft before this draft process. Now, before the draft process, I was like, he's going to fly up draft boards. I thought he would be as high as he's being projected mm -hmm. because I thought this dude runs a 4-5, 4, 4, 4 40, which he, they didn't test him on that. But he has a rocket of an arm, and that's going to show in the combine. He's going to interview incredible. Yeah. Doing all those things, and now he's being talked about. Maybe you pick him over Meg, right? It's happening, yep. So, you know, this could be a smokescreen from the Patriots, but I get it. If, if you are investing as much as you're investing by pick, picking a quarterback, you want it to be the right guy, but most importantly, you need to love the guy. Let's yeah. say they do all this stuff with Drake May and they don't love him. I don't want him to take him. Picking a quarterback is a huge investment. You need to love your decision, be confident with him, be willing to put the work in. Just because the fans sure. want you to pick Drake May, if you don't love the prospect, mm -hmm. but you love J.J. McCarthy, you need to figure out a way to get pick McCarthy then. Right. That's what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because your you're, you're willing to invest in him and that's your guy. Mm -hmm. Um. Now... I think a way this can work out for everyone <laughs> yeah. is if you want McCarthy, I think there's a way you don't get as screwed by picking him at three, mm -hmm. right? I think there's a way you can trade from three with the Vikings, get that haul, because I'm assuming they prefer Drake May over McCarthy. I could be wrong. And then Arizona is looking to trade so you trade back up to four. You don't give up as much as you just got. Mm -hmm. But that way, it's like you took McCarthy at four, and maybe you keep that second round pick. Right, yeah. In the future. Something like that, mm -hmm. where it's similar to the Celtics trading from one to three to get the guy they want in Tatum and get a future first round pick. Exactly. Win-win. Um, Still don't love it. Yeah. I think it I think it's a risk, but I'm also like, what was he 25 and 1 in college? He was. He's a winner. <laughs> yeah, that that's for sure. Yeah. He um, was. So that's probably an unpopular opinion. Hey, no, I mean, it's I get it. I mean, I get that you you and obviously these scouts see something that I probably I guess I just don't see. I think and it's Partly the the fact that they didn't throw, but obviously, like they had Blake Corum was unbelievable, and their offensive line was so good, and their defense was so good, so they could run it so long, or so much. I think it was also like the the playoff games, like when he had to throw, he didn't look his sharpest, and obviously, you know, when you don't have to throw all season, and then all of a sudden you're put in a situation you're not comfortable with, um, and obviously they won the national championship, but. You know, against Alabama, he threw that pick that got called back on the first play. Um, but he kind of settled in after that. Um, so I, hey, I if if we do draft him and he ends up being awesome, that that'd be great. But personally, I don't see it. But I I, I understand how you see it. He clearly has talent. Um, but I'm just not so sure it'll translate to the next level because you know he struggled against the top at the top tier teams uh, and obviously still beat them, but that's just, uh, you know, part of uh, why I'm not so sure about him as much as Drake may. Yeah. And, and I prefer Drake may, but I will say there's pros and cons. I would say um, McCarthy, you can start right away. Yeah. I definitely. believe that. I don't think you can do that with May. McCarthy's got all the fundamentals down in terms of footwork um, I his arm strength is not at Drake May's level, but I don't think it's that far down. Yeah, I mean, 
I really don't. You saw him at the combine. He was he was dropping nukes out there. So it was it was looking good. And I just I like his decision making a lot more than Drake May. Drake May has a bit of Josh Allen decision making where he's like, this would be a cool highlight. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I can do it. Whereas like and it sounds so stupid to say this, but like JJ McCarthy like doesn't mind checking it down and getting eight I mean, yards. You know that's so you know it's so important for that. And, and no, it's not flashy. But that's what wins games. Exactly. Ask 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally ask 12, right? Yeah. Like, it's and it's tough. so stupid to talk about that. But, like, Caleb Williams wasn't even doing stuff like that. Now, part yeah. of it's the system he was in. But it's just, it's just stuff like that, man, where it's like. And yeah. I sound like the dumbest dude talking about a check down. I get it. No. Nah. That that I agree. That I think is such a big thing um, for quarterbacks. I mean, you see young guys just try to make that crazy play when it's not there, um, when they have you know a check down. It's but it's so much more important to get that you know three or four yards and just keep the keep the chains moving, keep the game going, and keep that momentum than just to make a stupid play and either interception or uh, you know just an incompletion that stops the momentum. So. I think, you know, from – and like you said, the best quarterbacks say that. Tom Brady, you know, I feel like Aaron Rodgers has said it a lot of times. You know, Mahomes is so great at it now. Just checking down, getting those easy yards, and then that also opens up, you know, to go deep later on in the game. So that that's a big thing. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a good, good point. And final thing I want to say on him, I think it's fair to say he is probably the best leader and most, most coachable guy of the QBs. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I I won. think I he feel with the championship, so Penix might be a better leader honestly, but regardless yeah. he's, he's a lot younger yeah. than him, right? I don't know, it's just stuff he's like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but those are like all the options. If I was to rank what I want, mm -hmm. probably be May 1, mm -hmm. Harrison 2, trade down get your tackle and whatever else you want. Yep. And then McCarthy move is last, but I'm trying to say this in a way where if they go McCarthy, mm -hmm. I am not mad at it. And in fact, I'm quite intrigued because okay. that means there's something in this guy that got them excited. Yeah. that's And that saying. excites me because they see similar things I'm seeing. Yeah. And they're willing year one to bet their future on it pretty much a mm -hmm. lot of pressure and they're going we trust this guy so it's something i'd be excited about if they did it i don't necessarily think they should but if they did i'm not against it for sure the, yeah the thing is yeah the second it happens if it does i'll be like no i did not want this the second he gets to training camp and otas i'm gonna be like all right here we go jj mccarthy star of the future so I could be convinced, you but can, uh, you can be mad. But then I want you to remember this convo and just definitely. get excited about. It. Support For the sure. hell out of them, Patriots Absolutely. fans. This is what I kind of yeah. was was alluding to. Mm -hmm. More than double digit Patriots fans in my life said, "If they take JJ McCarthy, I'm not a Patriots fan." Come on. And what I have to say to you is, don't support the Patriots anymore. <laughs> I don't want to talk Patriots with you, no, because. That is such a horrendous thing in my mind to say after everything they've already done. Right. You know, and, and it's like, like, don't come back ever. No. Because no. I'm going to put on record. When he comes to the Patriots, and after year three, you're thinking Super Bowl with this guy because of how good he's done. Don't come back. You're not a Patriots fan. No. Find another team. You didn't watch, you didn't witness six Super Bowls. That wasn't, you didn't witness that. You can't, you can't remember those. That's not you. I, I, I it, it. it just pisses me off when, when, when I hear stuff like that. I, I hate it. And it's, it's, it's that it's either, you know, it's either the JJ McCarthy or it's just, you know, I'm done with the Patriots. It's like right now we're in a rough time. It's been a rough few years, but you know, I'm excited. 
we got a bright future, I think. If you're not going to stick with us through the rough times or the times you don't agree with, yeah, don't don't come back and try to say you were here all along when we're getting ready to win another Lombardi because I trust this organization that we're going to get back on the right track and I'm excited for it. It's 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 fun, you know. It's never been this excited for a draft. So, I mean, Really? I'm just, I'm just excited to, you know, see what the future holds and if it is JJ McCarthy, Yeah, I'm going to support the hell out of him, and every Patriots fan should do the same. Final thing I want to say, did you watch the Dynasty doc? So I watched, um, so yeah, I only have Ted, La or I was going to say, I only have Apple TV because of Ted Lasso, so that's the only Mm. reason I ha have it. Um, but I watched the first six episodes, I think, and then essentially... the documentary makers made it seem like Bill Belichick murdered Od Odin Lloyd. So I was done after that. <laughs> Not pretty much. I well, I, I heard clips, Yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm just thinking, who authorized this? Who's the director? Like, there, you know, there's certain guys I know who have a disdain for the Patriots. Wes Welker doesn't like the Patriots. Yeah. Like, we know this, right? Danny Amendola, he's kind of Danny Amendola likes doesn't his. like Phil. Likes his teammates, doesn't really like the Pats Yeah. organization, but Right. it's just things like it's just so confusing to me because it's like they're being painted as you know, Bill's being painted as this horrendous guy, coach, whatever, and it's like so what he did wasn't like special, wasn't great. He didn't do any of it. Like I, I just I don't I don't get it. I really don't. I, I think it's the type of thing I'm sure you've had someone in your life who has pushed you really hard and at the time it pissed you off. Yeah. But at the end, you're like, I'm glad I went through that because it made me better and it got me to where I am, whatever. I have multiple people like that in my life. Absolutely. To me, Belichick's a similar way. You have to suffer in order to succeed. Yeah. It, it's what you have to do. And it's worked, yeah. It worked. And, you know, there's also things where, like, I know they're cutting stuff up, trying to make it look bad, but it's just so, so crazy to me. And even, like, I think Brandon Lloyd's in it a good amount. Yeah. He was here a year. Right, yeah. And there was stuff coming out about how weird he was. Yeah. If you remember that. I don't know if I do, but I yeah. don't know. There were articles about how much he, like, stuck to himself and wasn't involved with the team and, like, just kind of whatever. That's not to say he's, like, a bad guy. It's just, like, I don't I, I but remember maybe him as a maybe Patriot. he doesn't know as much. I remember yeah him maybe as a he Patriot, doesn't know as much but it's just like I don't get why that's, he that's has the such last a part. right such a strong opinion on this doc. But it was just weird. I'm like I don't even know who ran it. no it's it was it seemed like so from what i thought going in was that it was completely like non Like Kraft had nothing to do with it, but from like hearing people talk about it, it seems like he did. So yeah, I'm. It really sucks. Yeah, it just it stinks because they were, you know, the first two episodes were good. It was all about the first Super Bowl, and then it just really stuck to all the negative parts of what was going on. And yeah, there were negative parts, obviously. I mean, Spygate, obviously. I think that was deflate gate was one of the most ridiculous things ever, but it, it happened, you know, um, there's things, losses that have happened, but they just, it would stick on that and then go, Oh yeah. And also they won a super bowl the next year. It's like, they just glossed over completely. Like, Yeah. it's like, Oh yeah. They just do a montage of them winning a super bowl. Okay. Can we talk about that? That was Yeah. like important, So like but so like all this bad stuff happens, so they just won a Super Bowl. That like out of spite, like what? Exactly. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I guess they were doing something stupid over there, but yeah, it's, it was dumb. And, you know, it's, it's great that all the guys, you know, I've seen from Edelman 
uh, Devin McCourty Slater, uh, you know, I just saw Stefan Gilmore came out and said it, Gronk. They're all like, this is ridiculous the way that they're painting him. Like Ronnie Harrison said he did like four hours of interviews and they used like one clip of his. Yep. Um, so it's just really, it sucks that, you know, these people, whoever it was, whether it be Kraft, uh, the Kraft family or, you know, these documentary makers just wanted to paint it in this picture that it was all bad. Um, but clearly from us living it, we know it wasn't all bad and all these players uh, coming out to Bill's defense and, you know, the Patriots defense, it's uh, it's good to see and it's good to, you know, prove all those people wrong, I think. Uh I do kind of have a theory that maybe Kraft wanted it to be pictured as he was the master behind everything and it was all him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe whoever directed it took it way too far in the wrong direction. But yeah, I haven't seen it, so it's tough for me to judge. I've just heard clips and stuff, and I have no desire to see it after the stuff okay. I've heard. Yeah, no, I would not recommend. Um. But yeah, I just want to touch on that. Just wish, just wish a certain a certain TB twelve would would step in for my guy. But exactly, yeah, and you know he's he's got... he's, he's doing some other stuff to try to get in the limelight. And uh oh, geez, <laughs> yeah, he's uh he's all over the place right now. He's uh doing a lot of stuff. He's not doing good not being in the spotlight. No, yeah, I mean he's hey, who knows? Maybe maybe everything that we just talked about for an hour. <laughs> will mean nothing and he'll be back well, number yeah, 12 J- june um, june 12th i'll be there yeah oh nice I that mean, should be fun retiring his jersey or or what is he doing what is it i don't know is it the patriots hall of fame or is it i think it's the patriots hall of fame okay i'm yeah. guessing i'd assume it'd be a little more because it's like an event i don't know i'm right. i assume it's like oh 12's retired you can't wear it anymore yes yeah, maybe a one-day contract Maybe yeah. he'll just be like, I'm coming back. I don't I don't know. <laughs> that would be interesting. But yeah, he's he's for sure uh not not he's staying in the spotlight, definitely. He's but, trying to. He's trying yeah. his best, that's for sure. For sure. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Excited for the twenty fifth of April where we get to see what direction this team's going. Do we kind of need to wait a little longer? Mm-hmm. To see who's gonna be the guy under center, or are we gonna hope we struck gold and whoever's under center is able to make the best of the situation he's in. Cause to be honest, he won't be in a great situation. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you're, if you're spending the third pick on a QB with all these holes, it's not going to be ideal. No. KJ Osborne, Kendrick Bourne will need to step up. Uh, and hopefully the, whoever the left tackle in the second round gets chosen is a good one. <laughs> yeah. We're going to need, we're going to need some help. Absolutely. But that's all I got. I don't know if you have anything to add. No, yeah, I got nothing else. Uh, but I'm just, like I said, excited uh, for the future. And, yeah, I'm just excited for a draft more than I've ever been in my life. So, I yes, can't sir. Wait. Just excited to get it over with and see what we do so we can uh, get ready for next season and hope it's uh, a better one than last. Absolutely. Yeah. Nate, thank you for joining. Always a pleasure. Yeah. I'll, we'll probably have you on after for a, a little recap of what went down. Yeah, but... we're um, uh, all in on JJ McCarthy. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> we'll uh, see what happens. We'll but... see what happens. Um, but I'll try to be doing these more consistent. But life, life is life. It's crazy. But it is. all right. Thank you all for listening and tune in next time. Peace. Yeah.